All right, today we're going to go through all the new Mythic cards and separate the good from the bad from the promising ones. Now, sadly, the two most interesting new cards are at the end, so yeah, that is kind of annoying. Anyway, let's get going. Gonna try to keep it somewhat short. Now, first off, we have the Angel of Grace. This card is amazing. You probably want to craft at least one of this to include in a control deck or in anything white, really. It is that good. The Exile from the Graveyard is, of course, amazing. You get 10 life. And of course that you can't be reduced below one health and has flying and flash. This card is certainly gonna be played in standard, however you probably are not gonna see more than a couple in a deck, especially since it shares a slot in mana cost with Lyra Dawnbringer. But as a one-off this is amazing, so it is a bit risky to actually craft it because if you open too many you're probably gonna get a bit sad you rather have 4 copies of Dawnbringer than 4 copies of Angel of Grace. Now the second mythic card is this weird thing. It is an octopus. This is strictly for draft in standard. This is unlikely to see play. It is just not very good. 4-5 doesn't fly. Doesn't do anything really but make some illusions and have semi hexproof. So this is a big no no. Don't craft this but probably do pick this in a limited setting, but not for Constructed. The third card is Spawn of Mayhem. This is gonna see play in Constructed for sure. It is really good, especially since it's not legendary, you can actually chain these, like cast one on turn three with Spectate, and then cast another one on turn four. It is just really good, hard to deal with, has four health, so it's outside of Lightning Bolt or Lightning Strike, whatever range so you're pretty much gonna need lava coils like at this point if you're playing red you should have four lava coils in any deck really because there's so many creatures with four toughness now that you really need it for example angel grace also has four toughness and of course all the drakes has four toughness as well so yeah include lava coil if you play red no matter what it is that good now next up we have this weird thing the haunt of high tower this is okay it's good in limited but for constructed six mana for a three three that can die to a bolt just no this is not like playable in constructed but you can probably draft this in limited and have it as your bomb or wing condition next up we have this random dragon now this one it's not bad but it's not an auto include as of right now it is probably gonna see a bit of play, but I wouldn't expect this to be like a staple card that you need to craft in order to play a deck. Now obviously with the M10 Planeswalker and in the Dragon Tribe deck you could make this work, but I don't think this is gonna be like a tier 1 card, or if it is, it's not gonna be more than like a couple of them in a deck. Next up we have the Mythic Ooze. Now this is... I don't think it's gonna be like a tier 1 deck, but it certainly is playable. You can probably include this as a one-off in Golgaria, just because you can bring up back cards so easily in Golgaria, and in the late game Golgaria settings, you could probably have this be a win condition, but I doubt it's gonna be like a tier 1 deck that is gonna be built around this. But I don't think you're gonna be unhappy pulling this, because it is of course really fun to use. And now we have our first Planeswalker in the whole set, and that's going to be the Grand Arbiter. Now this is obviously for creatures, I'm not quite sure if this is going to see it really play, it's not that good really. Obviously if blue-white creature is going to become a thing, like a tier 1 thing, then it's going to see play, but otherwise it doesn't really fit in control decks, so outside of creature decks this is never going to see play. And I don't think we have enough good blue white creatures to make it work. Probably in a triple color you can make this work. But I don't think this is something you really need to own. Next up we have the second version of Dovin. Now this is pretty much like the second version of Teferi. It's really weak. Like why would you play this when you could play either the Arbiter or just play Teferi. It has really weak effects. For 6 mana you gain 2 life and draw a card. I think it's pretty much the same as the second version of Teferi. 
that one also draws you a card, but I think it's only a card, or maybe it's two cards for six mana. But overall, this is a card you're probably never gonna see really play in standard or anywhere. Maybe in command, I don't know. But if you draw this, I yeah, I feel sorry for you. It's not a very good card, sadly. Next up, we have Emergent Power. This is just another fun card. Again, you're not gonna see this played really in standard. If you play in control, the last thing you want is your opponent to draw seven cards. Like if they're playing red and you allow them to draw a Banefire, you basically just lost the game. And if you're playing control, it's unlikely that you want the additional effect of putting your permanents onto the field. Unless you manage to draw a Niv Miss or something like that. So this is just another fun card really. Next up we have the first good Planeswalker and that is going to be Kea the Orshov Usurper. I don't know. But this is of course really good. Just the first ability alone and the cost sells her. It is of course really good against Gogaria. It's really good against Drakes and this is going to see play for sure. Especially in a triple control Esper. Style of deck, this is a really good card. You probably want to own at the very least two copies. I doubt we're gonna see the full four in that deck, but two is probably a number we're gonna see quite a lot, maybe even three, although I don't think she's good enough to warrant three copies, but as a two off, I can definitely see this in a control deck or as a sideboard card against anyone who wants to run a lot of graveyard control. Not Graveyard Control, but Graveyard Interaction. Next up we have this Random Angel. Now this is strictly a limited card. You're never going to want to play this in Constructed. It's too weak, too fragile, like 4 mana for a 4-3 that dies to Lightning Strike or any number of 3 damage spells. This is just nowhere near good enough. Like compared to this and Angel of Grace, like which one would you rather have? It's not even a competition, so this is strictly limited, never crafted really, unless you're like, I don't know actually why you would want to craft this, but whatever, let's move on. This is another fun slash limited card, it has a coin flip effect and it costs 6 mana for a 6-6 flying trample, never gonna see play in constructed, but in limited this is something you obviously want to actually acquire, because you know in limited, there are way fewer control spells, way fewer removals, so having something like this that has flying and trample could be quite game changing in a limited format, but obviously for standard it is terrible. Then we have Captive Audience, limited, really good, standard, not so much, way too expensive, and by turn 7 you probably already have your opponent either dead or close to for life, to make the effect not really relevant if you're playing any kind of aggro deck that includes red and black. And as a control deck it's unlikely that you want to spend 7 mana in order to get these effects. But maybe as a one-off in sideboard, but I doubt it. Just another limited slash fun card, really. Now we come to a second really good planeswalker in this set, and that is the Chaosbringer. Obviously, this together with uh, Carnage Tyrant is gonna be a nightmare. If you have elves you can play this on turn 3 and have a Carnage Tyrant be a 7-8 at turn 4 slash 5 depending on your hand. That could be really really awkward and obviously this is a card you're really gonna want to acquire. I am quite certain that green red or the whole jun color is going to become a thing again so this is a card you really want to acquire and it's looking to be really powerful. The second version of the planeswalker is well it's pretty much a Teferi situation again. All the good design went into the first version and the second version is questionable to say the least. You never want to play this when you can buy a chaos bringer instead. 5 loyalty for 4 mana, or 6 mana for 4 loyalty, I mean th this is not even a question. If you're gonna craft one, always go for the Chaos Bringer, and I would say you're probably gonna look at 3 copies minimum in order to play him in standard. Moving on we have a random worm. Now this card is actually really good. You probably don't want the whole playset, but probably a few of them. 
One of the reasons it's really good is his ability targets land, and you can kill the detection tower, which means that your carnage tyrants can be a lot safer. And it can also kill uh, Ascanta once it turned into a land. So this is another good card that you're probably gonna see quite a lot in standard. All right, it's time to move to the two really interesting cards in this entire set when it comes to mythics, probably because they're so complicated. First off, we have the Prime Speaker, and this is basically Birthing Pod on legs. I will flip in Birthing Pod on the screen in case you've never seen it. Obviously, this is a way worse version of Birthing Pod, but then again, Birthing Pod, when it was in standard, it was an amazing tier 1 deck, it was a really fun deck, and, well, we can talk like for hours if this is going to be playable, or if this just can be a fun card to own. Obviously, Birthing Pod was amazing, this being a creature makes it way more wonderful, and it doesn't have haste either, so you can't, like, as you could with Birthing Pod, use it as it came out. Now, if you're new to Magic and don't really understand why cards like these are so good, I'm gonna explain it in just a second, and let's read the text right here. Sacrifice another creature. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to 1 plus the sacrificed creature's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Now here's the most important part, and that is the text that says put. Put is not cast, which means that when you put a card on the battlefield, it cannot be countered spelled. This is what makes cards like these so good, because counter, well, counter magic doesn't work, because the card is being put and not casted. There are a few more examples of cards like this, one of them was of course Stonefort Mystic. Oh, I miss you Blades so much, one of the most fun slash broken standard we ever had. Which of course led to Mind Sculptor eventually actually getting the ban. We also have another card that is currently in the standard, which allows us to put things on the battlefield. And this is why cards like these are so powerful. Obviously, Birthing Pod is the most powerful example to get a bit Stonefort Mystic. But it's important for a new player to understand what the difference is between put and cast. Alright, so let's move on to the last mythic. And that is this Jellyfish Hydra or Beast thingy. Now this is another really really good card, and just as when it comes to put, you need to understand the text to understand why this card is so good. So let's read the text first. When you cast this spell, you gain half x life and draw half x cards, rounded down each time. The important part is the first part when it says when you cast this spell, which means when you cast the spell, this ability happens. Which means if you try to counter just the creature, well, the creature will be countered. But the effect of this whole text will still happen, which means you will still gain life and still draw cards. And this is why this card is really amazing. And if we can get a good green, blue, something else deck in standard, this is going to be a card you're probably going to see quite a lot as a 3-4 to four copy in any kind of blue-green deck. Anyway, that concludes this entire video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you next time.